Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is LK and today we are tackling a much needed bathroom makeover. This home was built in 1929 and I'm not certain, but based on my research, I think the bathroom tiles might have been added in the 1950s as I read somewhere that pink bathrooms were made popular by Mamie Eisenhower, but I'm really just not sure. I have, however, seen pink and black bathrooms all over Pinterest and they range from Spanish revival homes to 1950s homes, so we'll never know. But either way, whether it's original to the home or not, the pink and black tile is a vintage vibe, but it's definitely not my style. However, However, I really do appreciate how cool and unique it is and I love that it's just super vintage. And because I'm renting, I really can't change too much. So the challenge and the goal here is to lean into what we've got and make the best of it. Now I've seen tons of renovations of bathrooms like this one all over Pinterest and blog posts. And a lot of people actually end up just removing the tile altogether or they really lean into that like mid-century flamingo vibe or they end up just going super pink or they go really dramatic. And I'm trying to find somewhere in between all that that feels like it's close to my style and also representative of this 1929 Spanish revival home with also the eclectic mid-century style that I've been injecting into it. So I've been living in this house for exactly a year now, which means I know exactly what is frustrating me in this bathroom and what I would love to change. Right now, my main issues are the floors are quite dirty despite us cleaning them all the time, but we've never done a really deep clean with some like tile cleaning methods that I did like in my sister-in-law's bathroom. However, I do feel like these tiles might just be stained so we'll need to look into that. I also think maybe someone tried to regrout the tiles and now it's chipping off. It just looks like the grout is really uneven all over the floor but maybe we can cover it up with a rug or something. Next are these walls. They're kind of littered with weird marks, bumps, old drywall anchors and there's variation in the texture where someone had added stripes either with a different finish of paint or I think something sticky to create these stripes and now there's like residue left over from that. Additionally this blue paint color with the pink and black tile is just not doing it for me and I don't think it's serving the home in any way. Also the bathtub caulking is like really gross. I don't know if it's moldy or if it just needs to be replaced. And then we've got this really oddly placed light switch. I think they converted an old 1920s like circular light switch with a new modern one that's more rectangular but they didn't place it right so the bottom of the plate has just been cut off so that it doesn't run into the tile but now you can't like adhere it to the wall so it's completely open and exposed to the shower that's just the left of it which I don't think is super safe or helpful in any way. Plus, it doesn't look good at all. This is something that I really don't know if I can fix at all, but hopefully we can figure out something in the process of this makeover. So we've got a lot to do, but before we get started, I wanted to address some of the comments that I received on my sister-in-law's bathroom makeover video. I saw a lot of people repeating over in the comments, why would you put all this work into this landlord's property? They don't deserve it. You're putting all this time, money, and effort into a place that's not yours. And so because this bathroom is also vintage, just like hers, and it's got tons of work that needs to be done to it, I wanted to give you a straightforward answer because I have struggled with this perspective myself in the past many times. Honestly, I cannot overstate how important it is to love the space that you're in, especially when you spend so much of your time there. I really do believe that at the end of the day, you really should be happy with the space that you're inhabiting no matter what, because that really can positively or negatively affect how you think and feel on a day-to-day -day basis. For me, designing a bathroom to be my little oasis where I can actually relax and take take care of myself, whether it's a quick facial or just to have a moment of peace is essential to my mental health. So doing home projects like spending time out in the garden to make a little edible bed with fruits and veggies or just coming inside the house and doing a creative renter friendly makeover, even though I don't own this place, are just one way that helped me maintain my mental health and stay in a positive mindset. But another really valuable way I support myself that I've been doing for years now is going to weekly therapy sessions, which brings us to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp has been an amazing tool at helping me manage expectations and maintaining a positive daily mindset, especially when I'm balancing multiple projects, life events, and things don't really ever go as planned. After answering just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. And speaking from years of experience, I can absolutely attest to the fact that having the right therapist is almost even more important than just going to therapy itself. So one of the best features of BetterHelp, in my opinion, is that they can easily help 
help you switch therapists at any time. And to be honest, it's definitely taken me a few tries to find the right one, but now that I have, I get so much out of my weekly sessions. I also love that BetterHelp makes it really easy to schedule a session with your therapist via phone call, video, or messaging from your phone or computer, whatever works for you. You'll usually get matched with a therapist within 48 hours, so you can get started right away. If you think that you could even remotely benefit from talking to somebody about maybe just some of the daily struggles that are getting in the way of having a positive mindset, you can visit betterhelp.com slash living with LK or just choose living with LK at sign up to get a special discount off your first month. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's talk about the plans for this bathroom. The items that we cannot change for the landlord are the ceiling light and the faucet as they're original to the home. And honestly, if I took down this ceiling light, I don't know where I would store it. It looks pretty delicate and big, so we're just gonna accept it for what it is. So even though we can't change out the bottom faucet area where the bathtub lets water out, we did change out this shower head piece because it was just not working for us. So I found this one at Home Depot for $20, I think. And thankfully this shower head is much taller and just so much better than the last one. A major issue that I'm struggling with is this random yellow sparkled marble that is part of the sink. Again, something I've never seen before and it's frustrating that the sink is actually a part of it because otherwise I would just cover up the countertop with some contact paper or something. So we'll need to find a creative solution to neutralize this as well. We also really do not love the look of this white Amazon MDF medicine cabinet, but it does have a lot of storage space for all my things and I have been looking for vintage ones and they seem to be kind of small. So might just have to do something here to make this work as well. This blind here is also really loud and hard to use and when you pull it up it's just kind of like really tough to get it up there and to like lock it so I'd love to replace this as this is small enough that I could store it underneath my bed and put it back if and when we move out. I've also picked up tons of different swatches for this bathroom. I'm like, do I go really dark? Do I bring in some like darker red, which would be kind of cool. Maybe I just go like more neutral and match this with the sink. But before I get ahead of myself with a color, I do need to prep these walls for paint because they really need some serious spackling. <laughs> So the walls in here are looking kind of crazy. It just seems like someone put screws in the wall, put spackle on top, and then never sanded it down. And every time I look at this, it just looks really gross and messy. And I want to be able to like put stuff on the wall potentially. So I'm going to put some spackle on here and then let it dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to go to Home Depot and pick up some paint samples. And then I'm going to paint them on the wall and see what looks good. <laughs> I finally invested in one of these masks, so hopefully all of the dust and particles and smells won't affect me, but I really had a hard time picking a color, so I'm hoping that one of these yellowy beiges is gonna work because I'm thinking something like that would really help neutralize the space. Okay, it's a little bit later. I went to Home Depot, I had some lunch. I let all of this dry. I'm ready to be done with it, but I wanna talk to you about my paint samples because I guess I'm just talking through it myself. I need to figure out what to do. The first one I picked up at Home Depot, it's Antique White by Bear. And I really liked like the yellowy tone of it. It's kind of almost super similar to this door. So don't know if that's helpful, but I did kind of like the creamy yellowness of the door. The other one I'm kind of excited about is Roman Plaster. It it is also a bear color. I think all of these are. And it's got kind of more of a brownish clay. Kind of has a little bit of gray in there. Um, this next one is Spanish Lace. So this one kind of had like a yellowy undertone. Let me see what it looks like compared to the door. I don't know if you can see that, but it is kind of a lot more yellow than it is gray or brown or white. The next one that I'm really excited about is Moon Gaze. This one I just feel like also has that kind of yellowy. It's like if Roman Plaster and Spanish Lace were together. I really, really really just want it to be neutral in here to begin with and just getting rid of this blue and all these like lumps and bumps on the wall will be great. I think I did a good job picking the right colors here which is awesome. I love all of them actually. I think I'm leaning toward this one which is moon gaze which is what I thought I would like um, but I'll let them dry and then we'll look at them in the morning and then we'll go from here. Okay, 
it's the next day and I'm really just overthinking this. And I'm not sure why. I just really want to make sure I have the right color because I think it's, I'm just nervous that there, there's a lot of pink tile in here and I just want it to look good. And I have never worked in a bathroom with this much pink before. So it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but I got my pink painting shirt on today because I'm committing to moon gaze right here. And I think it's got like a nice greenish undertone, but it still feels yellowy. So I think it should feel nice with the black and the pink in here. And then maybe we can bring in some like green accents or something, but this is what we're going to get started with. I should only have to do one coat of paint because I learned last time that I should just pay for the expensive paint. So I paid a little bit more, got the one coat marquee bear paint, I think it is. I'm also wondering if I should just paint the ceiling. I feel like I should. I think it would be nice to have this color drench moment, but I will probably have to think about that once I get some paint on the wall. So because this bathroom is so small, I couldn't use my long stick and big roller. So I ended up just using this hand roller. However, I made sure to get the premium one for smooth and semi-smooth services. And this was amazing. This went on so well. As you can see, it's super saturated. I did have to wear a mask though, because this paint smelled absolutely horrendous. It was making me like a little bit dizzy. So I'm glad that I invested in one of these masks. I truly did not have to do more than one coat in here. I just covered up the majority of the wall with the roller. And then I went in with a detail brush and we just went around all of the fine edges. I didn't want to take off the medicine cabinet as the way that it's connected looks a little sketchy and I did not want to dismantle this built-in curtain rod that's actually attached to the bottom of the bathtub but we did pick up some of these premium angle brushes and they were fantastic. is kind of crazy from being in that mask all day. It is kind of a lot to paint this room, even though it's small, it's just really high ceilings and it's really small floor space to like maneuver around in here, especially with a camera. So I think I've made a lot of progress. As you can see here, I didn't paint some certain areas because I realized that I had missed some anchors in the wall. And also there was just more like, you know, little holes and gaps that I feel like need to be filled, but I'm obsessed with the color right now. I think it's looking so, Good, so I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and I am so happy that I really debated over this color because I'm really loving it so far. I think it's completely transformed the bathroom already, but there's so much left to do. I need to recock the bathtub and try to remove some of that like black mold stuff. I also need to do something with this medicine cabinet. I did want to check what I had in the garage just to see if I have something left over from another project. I have this from my sister-in-law's bathroom and I don't know if this color is exactly the style of what I'm going for in here. But but I thought I could maybe stain it to make it a little bit more teak colored. And I could probably maybe put it in here and kind of just add a little bit more warmth to the middle of this. I know that this already is here as kind of like a slatted look, but there is no kind of wood feature. And I think just adding that here would make it a little bit, you know, more interesting to look at and make it feel more of a unique piece. I also really want to change out these knobs too. So I'll have to find something to replace these with. Instead of taking this off the wall to work with it, the way that it's screwed in on the back looks a little sketchy. So I'm kind of afraid to like unscrew it. And I think I'm also gonna paint it the antique white color as I have some of that sitting around. Cause I think the antique white would just be a little bit better than just this stark MDF white. And it would have like a smooth transition from the wall to this cabinet. The color is just like a little bit more creamier. So I think softening everything, making it feel a little bit more vintage and old is interesting. So I'm painting this with this Zinsser primer as this is really great for like MDF products it really makes the paint adhere to it and not peel off and I'm gonna apply it with this tiny baby roller that I found at Home Depot in this little tray I think this would be really helpful and you can also buy the premium rollers for this one as well so I think this will be really fun and cute to use So 
while I was waiting for the cabinet to dry as well as the stain on those slats, I really needed to get started on the bathtub and this was the most tedious process I've ever done. I had to scrape out all of this caulking with a really sharp X-Acto knife and I did it very slowly. This footage is very sped up because I did not want to scratch the bathtub. Basically, if you're interested in doing something like this, you just lightly and slowly graze your X-Acto knife on the very top and on the very bottom of the caulking until you can get the most of it off. And I think this honestly took me like maybe over an hour or more. This was very slow. However, I didn't end up scratching the bathtub and I was really happy with the fact that I was able to get most of this out. I do suggest getting a kind of plastic or rubber type spatula or spackle knife because it'll help you scrape off some of that excess while not scraping the tub. Well, this is by far one of the dirtiest jobs. It's so disgusting. And I just plugged that so it doesn't go down the drain. But I think I had success here. However, I'm really struggling with some of these areas. I really can't get any of this old caulking out. I got some of this. Supposedly it's supposed to break down even like the oldest caulking. So I'm gonna put this on here and let it soak for 20 minutes and see if that helps. I had to wear a mask because it literally smelled like nail polish remover, but it really helped break up some of that old stuff. Honestly, I think some of this caulking has been there since this bathtub was installed. And then it looks like someone did a really poor job of putting caulking on top of that. And after all my research, I learned that you cannot just layer caulking on top of old caulking. It'll just come off and it'll actually get this like black mold stuff on it. So you just have to take all of it out and start from scratch. And then finally, I was looking up ways to officially and forever remove this mold. And the best way to go about it to start on a clean slate with brand new caulking is to get some toilet paper and you just kind of twist it up in little bunches and then you drip some bleach over it and you shove it kind of into the cracks and let that dry. And I've read that you can leave it on for up to 24 hours and it'll just dry out the toilet paper and it'll completely disinfect and bleach that whole area. But I decided to just keep it there for about an hour or two because I didn't want it to bleach the tiles. I didn't know if they had any possibility of getting bleached. So I took it off and let it just dry out overnight and checked it out in the morning. You can see how amazing this looks. I am so happy with this. You know, this is like some deep cracks in the tile here, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to do anything about that. But wow, it looks a hundred times better than it did. And I can't wait to just add a fresh little line of caulking and be done with this. I got this Quick Seal Plus. This is from DAP. It's white and it's also for kitchen and bath. It's waterproof, crack proof, you can paint it and it's easy water cleanup. So you can use like a wet rag to wipe it up and clean it up. Okay, while that dries, I wanna finish the cabinet for the most part. And last night when I went to go get that caulking remover at Home Depot, I checked out their trim and they had this amazing one that really resembled my dresser. And I thought that could really up the vintage cool vibe of the cabinet. So I picked up a few sticks and then as pine is notoriously hard to stain, I went and picked up some pre-stain as well because I was out and this usually really helps with all the blotchiness that pine can give off. And then I also grabbed a reddish brown stain because I wanted to bring in some more warmth. I stained those slats yesterday with early American and it just wasn't giving a warm enough color as those tiles are kind of peachy and I feel like having an orange tone stain in there like teak would make the most sense. So I picked up this one called Honey to see if it could give me more of that teak color. And I was honestly so shocked with how well that first the stain on the sticks was matching with the stain on the slats and second, how close it actually looked to teak wood. So I just need to let this dry, but today I really wanna deal with painting this and like filling some of these cracks and the holes and then potentially putting some knobs on this. But mainly I think covering up the stark white on the vanity with more of a creamier white would actually help the countertop that I really don't like blend in better and it wouldn't be such an eyesore. I'm just doing a really light scuff sand here with like a 220 grit sandpaper because I'm not going to totally strip this as I realize it's made out of MDF. So it's probably not original to the home. I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments if MDF is original to 1929 homes. I don't think so, but I'm just scuffing it up enough so that the paint will adhere to it. And this is the same antique white that I used on the cabinet as well. It's really hard to see a difference in this lighting, but you'll see on the left side of the vanity that the color is actually a lot more creamier and darker. 
So I've been looking for knobs for the vanity and for the cabinet. And I haven't found anything on Facebook Marketplace and I saw a couple on Etsy, but it was gonna take like weeks for them to ship. So I was looking on Google and I saw that there was an architectural salvage shop that just opened up here, which is pretty cool. So I'm right in front of it and I'm gonna go check it out and see if they have anything that is kind of in that Spanish revival realm, like maybe some like black iron or maybe something that just feels kind of like 1920s Art Deco to match the house. So let's go check it out. So I immediately recognize these from the hall closet in our house at the moment. We've also had these at some of our older homes in LA. So I know that they're original to that 20s, 30s era. And I thought grabbing some of these would be great, but they were about $18 each. But they had some vintage recreations upstairs that were made out of glass or bronze, and they were a fraction of the price. They don't have like tons of stuff, but lots of really great things. And I ended up getting some reproductions of what we already have in the house. The house has like these two crystal knobs that look exactly like this. They're made out of glass. And this guy like reproduces them and they look exactly the same. And they were only $4 each. So got five of them and I think it's gonna work out. And I'm really happy I know about this place. <music> So once these trim pieces were dry, I just took my miter shears and cut down the size of the cabinet, which is about five and a half by 18 and a half. And then I aligned the edge of it with the miter shears and did a 45 degree angle on both sides as if I was making a picture frame. And after every time I cut it, I just rechecked that it was still 18 and a half and five and a half to make sure that it would fit into that opening very snugly. And you're gonna see a little seam in the corner, but I don't think it takes away from the design. So then I put a really light coat of wood glue on the back of these so that they didn't ooze out and also because they were so tight in this little opening they really fit in there snugly <laughs> So due to the design of these knobs that the screw has to go through the center, they made it really long. So I had to go get this little hacksaw, but it was pretty easy to saw off all of the extra bolt. I cannot believe how much better this looks. This looks absolutely amazing. And no, it's not perfect, but oh my gosh, this is a hundred times better than what it was. I just wanna clean out the bathtub. I think I'm gonna get some barkeepers friend and then this is gonna be done. And then we just need shower curtains for this. Today was a long day, I got so much done and I'm really happy with this bathroom right now. I just need to take a shower in the other bathroom and I'll follow up with you guys tomorrow and hopefully we'll get all the finishing touches done. Okay, it's a new day and I'm so loving this cabinet. I think it's really cool and interesting and feels very unique to me and very special. So last night we actually had a handyman come over and fix this outlet here. Basically there was like a screw in here that was bent, which was making it come off the wall. So he fixed that, so now it's flush. I also took all the hinges from the vanity and soaked them in some mineral spirits. So it's been about maybe 24 hours or so. So I'm gonna try to get off as much paint as possible. It's probably not going to be perfect, but it's gonna be so much better than just looking at cakey paint on the hinges, so hopefully that works out. And then I need to just put the doors back on. I did repaint them with a fresh coat of antique white and I filled in some of the gaps that were on the doors so that they should just be kind of clean and fresh and feeling brand new. And then I went shopping a ton at different places throughout the course of this makeover process, so I have quite the haul to share with you. And one of them is right here. So I took the blinds off of this window last night because I really Really just wanted to put up something simple and I loved that ring Bloma Roman shade that I got from Ikea for my bedroom and so I went to Ikea to see if I could get a size that would fit this window and luckily they had one that just basically exactly fit one inch bigger just like in my bedroom so I removed the blinds and I filled the holes and repainted over them and then put up this little Roman shade and even though it's just a simple white linen color it really does make an impact on the light in here it also provides a little bit more privacy and I just love the way it looks I think it provides a 
really simple, minimal texture on the window. And then I wanted to figure out some kind of hook situation for towels in here. So I went through my thrift flip box and I actually bought this, I think over a year ago. I think the tag says January, 2023. And I was gonna do something with it, but I thought this could be great in the bathroom. So I just sanded it down and then used a tack cloth to remove all of the extra sawdust. And then I wanted to try adding that honey stain onto this to see if it will give the same teak vibes as the cabinet. And luckily it looks identical. So I'm a huge fan of this stain and I think it's like my new favorite, honestly. So I put it behind the door so that when the door closes, when someone's showering, you can see it and it's really pretty. And I got some towels that I'm gonna put on here. And then when the door is open, it doesn't interfere with it. So I think this is actually the perfect size. I have nothing but good things to say about this brush drill bit. It is just the best way to clean the floor. Even though I've cleaned the floor in the past, this is really giving it a deep clean. And thankfully the floors aren't really stained. They are cracked though and do have some grout missing, but this looks a hundred times better than what it looked like before. So using toilet bowl cleaner and this drill bit brush is the way to go. I also kept going back and forth of whether to put these knobs all over the vanity. And I finally decided to just put them on the drawers because I think that would look a little bit more appropriate and just more more minimal and simple to just highlight the knobs. I also thought replacing this outlet cover would just make it look a little bit more vintage. So I wanted to bring a little bit of green in here to see what that was like and test it out for a while. So I went to Target and found this really green plush bath mat that I can either hang over the side of the tub or leave on the floor. And I also grabbed the matching plush green towels as we honestly were due for new towels anyways. And it also pairs really well with the stain of the wood. And then I really wanted some kind of elevated version of a nightlight. And so I found these battery powered lamps in a pack of two on Amazon. And I thought they were so minimal and chic and you just charge them with a USB-C cord and then you can tap them to like dim them in three different levels. I also surprisingly found a ton of great stuff at Target. I got the cute little trash can there for like $10. And then they had these really nice shower curtain liners that were thick and just felt a lot more high end than those flimsy plastic ones that are see-through. So I got two because I have this big round curtain rod that goes around the tub. And I picked up these really sleek, simple curtain hooks that would easily slide over the curtain rod so that it could hold the shower liner and the decorative shower curtain separately and easily just flow around the rounded edge. I just love how simple, minimal, and sleek they are. You can barely notice that they're there. I was also really surprised to find such a minimal and simple decorative shower curtain at Target for an affordable price because they usually just don't have stuff like that when I've checked in the past. I think this simple stripey plaid pattern is perfect for the era and the style of this bathroom. And speaking of perfect for this bathroom, I found this for like $6 at Target as well and it completely matches the tiles in this bathroom. I just could not believe it. Well, I have my pink shirt on to reveal to you the final look of this pink bathroom. But before we do, let's get a quick reminder of what this room used to look like. changes in here were very small, but they all added up to a very big transformation. By just bringing in some green towels and a bath mat, it completely changed the look of this bathroom already. And by adding in this warm paint color, it has completely opened up this room and just makes it feel so much bigger and so much more airy. I'm absolutely obsessed with the cabinet and I feel like it's definitely something I would pick up if I saw it at like an antique store or a vintage shop or at a garage sale. By adding in those $4 knobs and some warm wood tone with the really pretty trim, this cabinet feels totally brand new. And yet it also has this really cool vintage vibe. Also putting a little lamp on the countertop is just such a fun moment. I love doing that in the kitchen and I think it's great to do in a bathroom. And especially if you don't have a lot of plug availability like I don't in this bathroom, having something that you can recharge is absolutely a game changer. And although like a soap dispenser is not that exciting, when you find one that just totally fits into the bathroom like this one did, it just feels like it's part of the bathroom now and it was meant to be here. I really do feel like you can change your entire perspective on a space by just embracing the things that maybe you just can't change. For 
example, I couldn't take down this mirror, but I really do love how it opens up the space because this room is quite small. I love that because of this mirror, you can see the cabinet on that wall because otherwise it would be hidden by the shower curtain. I love trying to make these rooms in this home look like they are from the era of when this home was built. I think it's super fun to lean into the style and not make it something that's mine, but make it something that works for the house. And I really do feel like that's what's happened in this bathroom. I feel like now this space feels like it's been preserved from like the 1950s or something. I just really love and appreciate this home so much and I hope to stay here as long as possible because I think it's just a very special space. Let me know in the comments what you like about this bathroom makeover and definitely subscribe if you wanna see more makeovers like this. If you enjoyed this bathroom makeover, then you'll probably enjoy the other bathroom makeover I did in a old 1920s craftsman style home. Plus I have a bunch of other videos on this channel that talk about home decor, DIY, thrifting, and making over your home in an approachable and affordable way, whether you're a renter or a homeowner. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.